a Mad Dog Unleashed. Socrates, good afternoon. How are you today? Good afternoon, Doggy. Uh, just wanted to chime in on the uh, Colts situation. I'm a Raider fan, so I don't have a, a dog in the fight, but you got to feel terrible for them. If if I were them, and uh, I really wanted to, to kind of uh, get back at them, I'd be looking at uh, Eric Mangini. I think that the time off away, I think he's got to be wiser. They are, not, they are not hiring Eric Man. That ship, Socrates, has sailed. They are not hiring Eric Mangini to coach the Indianapolis coach. He's not an offensive coach. Uh, you know, he doesn't have a ton of personality. Uh, they are not going back to the Belichick tree. That That's not happening. Now, I mean, I don't mind you giving me a suggestion. You can't go back to a Patriot guy. And I understand that, you know, he, him and Belichick and he... He, he went against the kingdom, so they can't stand him. But that you can't say. That's not fair. Anthony in Florida, uh, and he's aboard. He's on Mad Dog Unleashed. Tony, good afternoon. How are you today? What do you have for me? How you doing? How you doing, Chris? Fine, Tony. Thank you. What's up, man? Hey, every time you hear a Tom Petty song, it just still shocks you, these song. Yeah, it does. It, it is hard. To, it, suddenly, too. 100%. Yes. Yeah, and uh, your, one of your favorite movies was on the other night, Chris. I had to watch Hoosiers. It was on the other night, and I watched the whole thing. I've seen it a, a thousand times, and I... Like Shawshank, if it's on, I'm gonna watch it. So. Great movie. I tell you what movie I'm into. Go see that Marshall movie with the uh, on Thurgood Marshall. Good movie. Very good. Okay, I'll, I'll look into that. What do you think? I know a couple of days after the Skins traded for Smith, they thought about, and I don't think they're gonna do it, Chris, but they thought about franchise tag and still Kirk Cousins to try to get a draft pick. What's your take on that? I don't think they're that? gonna do it either. Um, uh, I, I don't think that they are going to do that. Um, I I just I, I he first off he's going to be able to veto any trade that he can veto, because he's never going to sign long term unless he wants to go to the team. So you're limited to where you can trade him anyway, because of the fact and no team is going to trade for him unless they can get him inked to a long term contract. So you're dead no matter what you try to do in that spot. So from that standpoint, uh, uh, Robert, that is not going to work. To be honest with you, here's Tony. Is out. And White Plains haven't spoken to him in a while. Uh, not since the game. He's probably got a lot of takes. Al, take it away. What do you have for me? Let me hear. Uh, Chris, Chrissy, how are you? You had a great week out there, I hope, despite uh, some rather chilly weather. Chilly is not the word. Uh, frozen is more like it. But yes, uh, a good week overall. It was a bizarre setting because of where the radio row was compared to everything else. Uh, and, you know, getting guests out there is a little tricky. I wouldn't have wanted to been at a terrestrial radio station on that third floor next to the Steak and Shake. Uh, at least we were in a good spot downstairs. But I understand. Go ahead. Next. Um, just a couple quick things. Uh, it's not the biggest play of the game. The fourth and short certainly was... To me, that, that when it comes to that's game on the line, in, in my mind, uh, and you must and, complete that. You must get the first down there at thirty-three, thirty-two. If you do not, you are going to lose the game, forty-one, thirty-two. That's all there was to it. In, in, in all probability, they were unable to stop. So uh, I thought Foles was terrific. Uh, he played fabulous throughout the playoffs, and you're know, very happy for him because obviously he had a couple tough years. And I thought he played remarkable football after, you know, a really bad end of the season. So he deserves a ton of credit, as does his staff. Uh, but th- this is an incredibly low move. I- obviously, you point to McDaniels, number one, for doing what he did. And I don't want to hear about, you know, you ch- he had a staff in place. His agent's in communication with the GM and says where it go, you know, er- er- earlier in the day. So the office is cleaned out. So he's called for number one. And look, you know, if Bob Kraft or his son or whomever did something to precipitate this, and I assume you, I assume they did, that that's pretty low too. I mean, two well, years first off, I you know, uh, it, it, unless McDaniel's didn't want the job, what could they do to precipitate anything? Well, I, I, obviously, you know, a, a big raise, and you're automatically going to be the, the successor, which wasn't planned before. Yeah, but you know, but, but we all knew that if he stayed, he had that chance. And who knows when Belichick's going to quit? You can't take that. You can't stay in New England uh, and wait out Belichick. Belichick might be there ten years. Well, how do we know? Nobody's going to hire him now. Well, I grant you that. That's true. His name is Mud. Who is going to hire him? You got a better chance of bringing in Lane Kiffin. At least he'll show up and take the job for a while. That is accurate. Uh, again, I will stick with my basic point today. Uh, 95% of the blame here is on McDaniels. Um, 
I really don't think you can blame Kraft, Brady, or Belichick if, in fact, they saw a wavering uh, offensive coordinator who got cold feet and they pounced. Uh, they didn't probably want to lose him. He's been a good coordinator. Now he's got a stacked deck, and I think anybody could have done it. I mean, a lot of Patriot offensive coordinators have won championships, Charlie Weiss, for instance. Uh, so it's not like he's the only one who could do it. Uh, but I think that they may have seen a coach who was very, who was, you know, nervous and was susceptible to being convinced to change his mind that may have and they may have pounced on that but i don't think there's anything wrong with that myself uh, uh, i think that's what any good organ what, what is craft supposed to do bring him into his room give him milk and cookies hold his hand and tell him to go to indianapolis it'd be okay don't worry about it you'll get over this indecisiveness he's not what's he's, he's, he's 42 years old I mean, he's not supposed to help push him out the door. He wants to keep him. So I don't have a problem with the way Quair, Brady, and or Belichick or any of the combinations handled it. The issue is McDaniels. He had 22 days to basically, you know, figure out if he wanted to coach the Colts or not. And to tell them basically five hours after they planned the press conference, he's not coming is a joke. And I, I again, I don't think they – I'm sure he knew – Three weeks ago that the Patriots wanted to keep him and that maybe there's a chance one day that he could succeed Belichick. And I'm sure he even had an idea that, that Kraft would pay him a little more money. We never. Kraft does not pay assistance. We never, he never has. Now, I, I don't know if that's changed, but in the old days, he never paid assistant coaches. So maybe, you know, he's up the ante some there. I can't answer that. But I do know 15 years ago he never did it. So and that might have had something to do with it too. Seven in front of the hour. We continue here on Mad Dog.